Hello, welcome to this week's Book of Mormon discussion. I'll be reviewing just some historical context and content from Alma's chapters 13 through 16. Hope to find this helpful for you. I just want you to recall a few moments here that were with Alma and Amulek. They're preaching in the city of Ammonihah, and they've been talking to Zeezrom, who is a... Uh, a lawyer who is skilled and well-versed in the law and so forth. Again, a little historical context that's important is Alma was the chief high priest, and or is, and he was the chief uh, judge, but he gave up the seat of being the chief judge so he could go preach full-time. He's been preaching from city to city. But now he's stuck in Ammonihah. Just to review that previously he was kicked out of the city. He left, but an angel told him, go back. And he did, and he met Amulek, and they have been preaching. So if you'll go to Alma chapter 13, this is possibly the best chapter about what it is to be a high priest. Now the question is, why do we know it's a high priest? Because in verse 1, it just talks about ordained priests, and verse 2, those priests. But if you go further, it talks about verse 6, verse 7. It talks about being the high priesthood, which we know as Melchizedek priesthood. So we're referring to those who are of the Melchizedek priesthood in this case. And there's some great things in the Come Follow Me book that you can read and study. And you could even have a discussion. Is he talking about prophets and apostles or all high priests? Uh, I think for this discussion, I think you can just say, okay, let's talk about priesthood holders, and who are they, and why are they called, and what uh, should they live up to, and so forth. Uh, there's some great things here. It's one of my favorite things about being a high priest. I've always wondered why Alma and Amulek were talking about priesthood to a city that was in a high level of apostasy. Uh, there must be something going on here. Well, we'll see a little bit in this block today of why this discussion was was in there. Again, I'm not going to review anything in the Come Follow Me book. You can read that on your own and read and see some wonderful things that are in here. Because it really is a great chapter. It's one of my favorites in here. We do have an interesting discussion and about Melchizedek. We learned something about him. The Bible doesn't say much about Melchizedek. We learn more about him in the Doctrine and Covenants. I believe that one of the reasons that Mormon added this story, this particular uh, teaching and doctrine about the priesthood, is so we can learn about the high priesthood and about Melchizedek. It says something in verse 15 that uh, gives us a little bit of uh, insight about him. Uh, he is the one who... Abraham paid tithes to. Uh, so it's really interesting. It says that he lived and he was king over the land of Salem. Remember, Salem is the root word for Jerusalem. So where was Melchizedek? He lived in Jerusalem, in that general area. That's verse 17. No. So there's some great things to learn. And if you want to have a deep study about the priesthood, I would say open up your, uh, your gospel library app. And do a search and study. Create a, a tag for a priesthood or high priests and study all of those references in there. You'll learn some great things about that. Well, they go in and continue to preach to the people, and it's not going to get better, except that Zeezrom does seem to listen. So let's go to chapter 14 for a moment. Chapter 14 is a chapter that I'm going to invite you to read, looking at this chapter in a different way. This chapter is a chapter about, and I think it's a type of Christ. In other words, life, death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven is all in this chapter. So if you'll just step back for a moment and reread chapter 14, or as you study it this week, look at it as these people in here who are martyrs, it's really a review of our life. We hear the gospel, we accept the gospel, we'll eventually die, we'll eventually resurrect and ascend up to heaven and be judged based upon our works. 
it's a really a great chapter for that uh, for that purpose. Now, it's interesting in here what Zeezrom's effect is. Remember, he was the one combating and fighting Amulet and Amulet. But go to verse 6. This is Alma 14, verse 6. And it came to pass that Zeezrom was astonished at the words which he had spoken, which had been spoken. And he also knew concerning the blindness and the minds which he had caused among the people by his lying words. So he is now harrowed up under a consciousness of his own guilt. Notice what guilt does. In this verse, he was encircled about by the pains of hell. Now he's going to repent. He is honestly going to, he knows what he's done is wrong. And he's out there trying to preach to people. Hey, you know what? Notice verse 7. I am guilty. These men are spotless before God. And he began to plead for them from that time forth. But they reviled against him. In other words, the man who's taught them wickedness, they're no longer listening to and saying that he's been duped. So this is the power of the adversary. Uh, they will not, uh, the, the adversary does not support his own people. He will drag them down, and then once they need their help, he abandons them. And that's what, he, that's what the adversary does with Zeezrom here. Well, all of these people, they gather together, and you know the story, as you read the story here, they'll be killed. Zeezrom doesn't. He escapes, as do many people, but there's a large group of them that they're going to, uh, to destroy, and they burn, and so forth. Uh, innocent people. Amulek and, Am and Alma don't get burned. They're forced to watch this horrific scene. And again, watch this to know that this is a type of, of life in here. I find it interesting that verse 16, this is where I think we receive some insights of why chapter 13 was given. Chapter 14, verse 16. Now this judge was after the order of faith and faith of Nehor who slew Gideon. So there's this in their terminology, their own priesthood order, after the order of Nehor. So I believe that's why they spent so much time in chapter 13 talking about the true order of the priesthood. Because there's this false order. And Alma and Amulek want to make sure they understand the true order of the priesthood. Verse 17. Alma and Amulek are a type of Christ here. They answer him nothing. If you recall, that's what Jesus did. Remember when, when he was before Pilate and the chief priests, they were accusing him, and Jesus answered nothing. Uh, there's a time when you don't say anything. It just adds fuel to the fire, and they're not ready to hear the message anyway. So they get cast back into prison. Verse 22 tells us how long, a little context in here. Many days. It doesn't tell us exactly, but they're in there many days. And then they come and mock them some more. Why don't you, if you have the power of God, deliver your own self? I think sometimes people do that with us, with our faith. Like, well, if you believe in God, why doesn't he cure you of your disease or your illness or take away your problems? That's not, I think we're looking at the question wrong. With that assumption, all illness, sickness, problems, and, and uh, challenges that we have are bad. But that's not the case. Sometimes those same exact problems, challenges, and and difficulties that we go through actually make us become who we are. I mean, that logic of why didn't Jesus stop the atonement and the suffering? Well, there was a purpose to it. That purpose was going to save all mankind. Likewise, our suffering sometimes has a purpose. And we're not to deliver ourselves from all of our problems and challenges. But we do know that in verse 26, they break the cords. And all the people that were in the prison mocking him, including the chief judge, of the area, uh, the earthquake happens, and it says in there that they all begin. Uh, no one is, is uh, escape this earthquake. That's verse twenty-seven. All the judge, the chief judge, the lawyers, the priests, the teachers who smote upon Alma and Amulek were slain by the fall thereof when the prison falls. So Alma and Amulek leave the uh, prison. They leave the city. And we'll just go to chapter 15 now. They go to a city called Sidon, and there they establish the church. There they meet Zeezrom again, and many of the righteous people who escaped and didn't get destroyed in the city of Ammonihah, uh, burned by the evil people. 
and they build up a church. It's really a great uh, rescue story of recovery. And we'll go to chapter 16. We're going to end with this. This is where a little historical context goes a long ways. Uh, here is a, a map that I've shown previous weeks. This is in the seminary teacher uh, resource manual in your uh, Book of Mormon, uh, in your Gospel Library app. It's at the end of that. This is just a map, not of current geography, but just showing Book of Mormon sites in relationship to each other. If you can see, the, the Lamanites live down here in the land of Nephi. And the Nephites live up north in Zarahemla. We say up, but we know it's downhill because they always said we go up to the land of Nephi. So notice the rivers here in these hills, and this major river flows northward out until the Great Sea. We see Ammonias way up here in the north. That location gives the people of Ammonia a false sense of security because they think there is no way the Lamanites are going to come destroy us in one day. Because it would take them days just to get up here, and they would have to go through the capital city of Zarahemla to get here. We have plenty of time. Well, what they didn't realize is that the Lord allowed the Lamanites to go through the wilderness undetected and destroy the city of Ammoniah in one day. We'll go to verse, verse 2. Behold, the armies of the Lamanites had come in upon the wilderness side, into the borders of the land, even into the city of Ammonihah, and began to slay the people and destroy the city. In one day, that city gets completely annihilated. Where the Nephites go in, they bury the bodies, and they abandon the land because of the stench. It's so bad. Again, here is a fulfillment of prophecy. Sometimes we have no idea how God is going to fulfill his prophecies, but he always does, and he always will. And this is a wonderful uh, scripture block. It's, it's a short week. But again, focus on the priesthood in chapter 13. Chapter 14, read it as a short summary of a type of our life uh, from beginning to end. It's a great, uh, great review of that. And then we'll see people who have to rebuild and recover. There is a power in chapter 15 with these people who, like Zeezrom, who truly have to repent. Uh, there's one more verse that we probably should look at in chapter 15 that I think is really good. Uh, Zeezrom, what does he have to forsake? If you go to verse 16, and, and Almulek too, because Almulek in one aspect is a convert here, right? And it came to pass, this is Alma 15, verse 16. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek Amulek, having forsaken all his gold and his silver and his precious things, which were in the land of Ammonihah, that's his hometown, for the word of God, he being rejected by those who were once his friends and also by his father and his kindred. So can you just ponder for a moment and say, what did Amulek and Zeezrom and others forsake? Homes, families, friends, occupations, careers, wealth, power, influence. I think many converts of the church go through a similar process. They sometimes have to forsake family and friends, lifestyles, sometimes careers. And what is it? That is an expensive, that's a high cost. I think we as members of the church need to uh, embrace these converts more wholeheartedly. What did Alma do? Verse 18, chapter 15, verse 18. Now, as I said, Alma, having seen all these things, therefore he took Amulek and came over to the land of Zarahemla and took him to his own house and did administer unto him in his tribulations and strengthened him in the Lord. I think sometimes we baptize people, say, oh, you're full members now. Life's great. Join us. And we forget the struggles and the lifestyle changes that they have to go through. What do we do? Maybe we invite them over to our own house, support them, strengthen them, uh, administer to them, listen to them. Say, tell me what you had to change. What did you lose? I, I, I know some people that they left their friends because the lifestyle that they left. Their friends didn't abandon them. 
they had to abandon their friends because of lifestyle changes they had to make in their life. And I think we can listen to them and support them and help them and nurture them. We can be better missionaries before and better fellowshippers after uh, we help these people restore their lives to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there's a few things to study uh, this week and ponder and pray. And then next week, we will discuss Alma 17 through 22. Have a great week.